Jumtron. Daikatana. What can be said about Daikatana? Quite a bit, actually. Now, even though Daikatana was not linked to one of my personal gaming experiences, I guess you can say it was like a friend of a friend to me. I'd heard about it, seeing it in pictures and magazines, and even being threatened by John Romero to, uh, suck it down. But our paths never really crossed. But I mean, hey, it's even the big brother to one of the most prolific and best video game franchises to ever exist. Now, I'm assuming that many of you out there know what Daikatana is and where its roots formed, but I'm sure there's an equal portion of you that don't know it from squash bean salad. So for you in the latter half, this next part is to get you up to speed. That's squash bean salad, and uh, that's Daikatana. I know I'm so funny! So now, a brief history on the tragic tale of Daikatana. Enter the 1990s, an era when computer technology in the mainstream was just starting to take off. People were starting to see its influences in places never thought feasible. Personal computers were becoming more of a household standard, and were also becoming more visually oriented. You see, I was born in the few years preceding the immense popularity of personal computers and the internet. So when I was a kid, we didn't use what we now know as Microsoft Windows. We used something called MS-DOS. Now, uh, it didn't look much like this. Yeah, it looked more like this. Captivating, isn't it? It wasn't until 1995 when the groundbreaking Windows 95 hit stores that most people made the switch, at least from my knowledge. It is true that versions of Windows did exist during this time period, like Windows 3.0 and Windows 3.1. But these were nothing like what we think of as Windows today and weren't as popular between people that I knew. Look at that. Windows 1.0. More like Windows claustrophobia. The reason I tell you all this is because I'd like to share with you one of the first gaming experiences I had as a child. Doom. Doom 2 more specifically, but Doom nonetheless. This game was kick fucking ass. And it introduced me to gaming in a way that Mario never could. Not to mention it revolutionized the gaming industry and popularized first person shooter as a genre. I know Wolfenstein 3D technically holds this claim to fame, but I feel that Doom was the game that made a bigger impact, even going so far as to be rated the best game of all time by GameSpy in 2001. It was simply epic. It scared the living shit out of me as a child. I remember always thinking that the mancubuses were following me whenever I was going to the shower. Don't ask. Maybe I should have been playing Doom at such a young age, who knows. It was pure action gaming at its best, and it had nothing to hide. But I digress. This game was the brainchild of John Romero and John Carmack. No relation. Romero being the lead designer and Carmack being the lead programmer. After the success of Doom, their public profile skyrocketed, and they became industry legends, going on to create even more groundbreaking software such as Quake, which popularized the online deathmatch, an industry standard today. Hell, Doom was so popular, even Bill Gates got on the bandwagon to promote Windows 95. Those two took the world by storm, so I guess we can expect that every game they'll make will just sweep us off our feet. Oh wait. Fast forward to 1997. John Romero leaves id Software to co-found another company called Ion Storm. A shooter named Daikatana is announced for the PC. Perhaps more well known for its controversial ad more than the game itself. But let me tell you, a shitstorm was a Bruin. The game was delayed and delayed, and even completely ported from the Quake engine to the newer and more technologically advanced Quake 2 engine. This was not as simple as they had anticipated, and led to them scrapping the entire 11 months of work that they had completed up to that point. The development process was so rough that at E3 1999, the demo they brought in could only run at 12 fucking frames per second. After missed deadlines, eroding company morale, and employees leaving the company during development, Ion Storm finally shat out Daikatana on May 23rd, 2000, to critically scathing reviews. Hurry the fuck up, or I will be forced to poop in eight. Um, this is, uh, this is Jacques. But I suppose he's right. We should get to the feature presentation. But let me just say, if we're dealing with absolute shit here, we may as well go as low as we possibly can. That's right. 
We're doing the N64 version. Oh, yeah. This baby was originally a rental only at Blockbuster, but it eventually saw a true release. Let me warn you, this, this might not be pretty. But I've never played the game before, so we'll be experiencing this for the first time together. Let's go in with a positive attitude and judge it as fairly as we can, because hey, maybe it's an underrated masterpiece that was just judged harshly at the hands of an evolving industry. All right, here we go. There's no turning back now. Ugh. All right. Have you ever seen a game with such shitty presentation? Where the textures suck, everything moves in strange robotic ways, and the music in the background literally just repeats the same few notes over and over again, and but look at this! What the hell's happening? Your guess is as good as mine. Eventually, this guy stops dicking around and opens the door to the longest and most boring intro cutscene I have ever seen in my whole life. I'm not exaggerating to make this funny. This is as bad as it gets. I timed it. This opening cutscene lasts 11 minutes and 30 seconds. Over 11 minutes before you get to do anything in an action game! What if Doom started off this way? Yeah. Two words. FUCK THIS! Ugh. This is torture. I mean, listen to this. Listen to this music. There's nothing else. Not even sound effects. From what I can understand, the story is as follows. It's the year 2455 AD, and there's some pandemic happening caused by some guy named Kage Mishima. By using the MacGuffin of the story, the Dai Katana, a sword, this Mishima guy traveled back in time and stopped the disease from being cured in the first place, giving him the ability to take over the world somehow. So you play as Hiro Miyamoto, a stiff, personality-lacking protagonist with really bad textures, who has to travel through different time periods and save the world. You know, who cares? Let's start. So, you start off in this rainy place, and no, I guess it doesn't look that bad so far. It's your standard futuristic shooter affair, and I already noticed that things are very hard to hit and take annoying precision to kill. D oh, oh, I I'd hit the fuse box? Okay, whatever. Man, why has everything got to be so tiny and hard to hit? A major part of the game that I never really noticed take effect is that it blends RPG and action elements. And every now and then, for no discernible reason at all, you'll get a level up or something. What? What was that? Every time you level up, the text only appears for like a fraction of a second. You never know what you got. Oh, and guess how many times it takes for the line, now go kick butt to get annoying. Yeah. Once! So about a few minutes into the game, you reach a part where there's this sort of low-hanging door thing. And of course, your first gamer instinct is to duck under it. So you try every button, but you don't duck. Then you check the menu for the controls, but you don't find any control tutorial or anything. So, of course, your second gamer instinct is just to shoot the hell out of it. But nothing happens. Mmm, punch it some! Give it some of that. Same deal, nothing. So then comes the lovely gaming sin of backtracking out of desperation. Now, may I remind you... This is the first three minutes of the game! Things like this can never be a harbinger of good things to come. So, after consulting the internet, I found that you actually can crouch. Haha, <laughs> look at that, isn't it cute? You wanna know how to do it? Are you sure you wanna know how to do it? Cause I don't think you wanna know how you do it. I'll tell you. R... And A, that's how you crouch. That's how you crouch. I wouldn't even be mad about this. If A, some tutorial popped up as you got to the door, you know, like in any decent game, B, the controls were listed somewhere in the game, or C, all the buttons were used up. But no! The L button isn't even used in the whole game. 
Why? For what reason? Why couldn't Crouch be L instead of R and A? Because of this fatal flaw, if it wasn't for the internet, I may have never gotten past the first three minutes of the game. It's like everyone at Ion Storm was on Ambient during the development of this game. But seeing the game as it is, maybe they were. Oh, I should mention, though. Kemco is responsible for this particular port, not Ion Storm. That excuses it, any. This game has some really terrible and tedious level design. Like, for example, this platform takes forever to come down, and it's really easy to fall off of it because of the slippery jumping controls, which are often a problem, as you'll see later on. But when you go on it, it goes up at like a million miles an hour! Why couldn't it come down that fast? Oh, and what a surprise! I slipped off! You can see where this begins to become a problem. As long as we're talking about tedium, I may as well mention that every time you die, you go back to the beginning of the level. This becomes annoying quickly, as this is the kind of game where you die, die, die. The jumping and dying becomes a problem in parts like this. Like, like look, there's no invincibility period like there should be, so the lasers can just take out your health in one shot. And this is pretty far in the level. What the hell? I have to go all the way back now? So eventually you come to this one part and... What the hell? Apparently this guy is being tortured. And all over the place in this game there are these people who just stand there completely unalerted to your presence. These people are all over the game and just serve to remove you from the game's atmosphere. If it exists at all. So you save this guy and he tells you that to get him out, you need to find the access card behind the Mishima logo that you passed on your way in. <laughs> so you retrace your goddamn steps in a gaming device that serves to make the game longer rather than better, and you don't find anything under the Mishima logo. You eventually realize that you were supposed to destroy the logo, because that makes a lot of fucking sense. You get the keycard. You use the keycard to save the guy, and then you're treated to perhaps the best cutscene of all time. Just look at it. Remind you of anything? They didn't even try! Who are these characters? Anyways, this running chat goes on the whole entire cutscene for a few minutes, and then it's the next level. I'm going to show you a good example of why this game fails on the most basic levels. Now what I'm going to show you is standard of the entire game, cryptic and shitty. And I'm going to let you see it in its entirety so you can get in a, a, a feeling for the shit. So you start off the third level here. You open this panel and uh, you're just making your way through the level. So, uh, oh, there's a bad guy. Shoot him. So uh, you make your way to this panel it tells you your password was rejected. You can't go through. So, this being the beginning of the level, you obviously backtrack and... and uh, oh shit, bad guy, shoot him! Oh, oh wait, was, was he the guy that was supposed to give me the password? Well shit, now what do I do? So, you make your way back to the password panel and talk to it again, thinking it'll make the guy respawn, but... It... doesn't. What's this? Is he supposed to teleport with this? Eventually, by pure luck, you get this guy to respond, and you get to watch him slowly shamble over to the door here, and... What? I mean, I don't know. It's no crazier than the other things people say in this game. In fact, some of the things these people say are pretty funny for the wrong reasons. I am working here. Oh yeah? Let's see some ID. Hey look, someone finally noticed that I don't belong here. Oh, oh no, never mind. He was just pretending to give a shit. Too cold? Check the air conditioner? Why would I do that? I don't even work here. Everything is okay now. Was it not before? Computers today is... What? You've got to be shitting me. Computers today is easy to use. No said. This isn't even a foreign game. It was made in America. Yeah, that's golden, isn't it? You'd be surprised what I make in a month? Would I? I don't know. Is he being sincere?